uh, Cal seemed to kind of struggle to defend you guys with your pass rush on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. What kind of advantages did that give you from a play calling or scheming standpoint? A lot because a, quarterback? a lot. I mean, one, we knew what his deficiencies were um, from his time at UCLA prior and then what he was in high school. So um, I think you, you, uh, you have to go in every game knowing who the backup quarterback is, what they're good at. And so I usually do it on Wednesday nights, but Wednesday nights, if there's not a lot of tape on the back of a quarterback, I have our uh, graduate assistants make a cut up of that guy, go back and watch their high school tape just so that we know what kind of athlete we're dealing with. Um, and I, he's, uh, he's a really good athletic kid. Um, we knew he would struggle with some of the, the stuff that we put in his face. And it's, it's hard for a backup quarterback to, to sometimes come in during the game because the, if their styles are different, and Chase Garbage is a really good player, that quarterback has to practice what that guy's good at. So um, we were able to get some pressure off the edge. We knew uh, we had a couple of places in the O-line where we wanted to attack. And when you have, when you know you can be successful in some of those spots, it makes the coverage easier. And then when we are getting pressure in the quarterback's face, those guys cover, seem to cover them a little better. I mean, it's a, um, and coverage, uh, pressure is the DB's best friend. And we kept telling those guys on the sideline, the only way we're going to lose this game is if you give up a big play over the top. And they were aggressive, so the free safety was playing a little bit deeper. Um, but I, I think when, when we know we can get pressure, if, we, if there's a weak link that we know we can attack and have success, it makes things a lot easier. Are you concerned about Kobe and his, his hand at all? Or um, you know I'm not concerned about Kobe because it's Kobe. Uh, Defensive-wise, he is he's the most consistent and might be the physically or mentally toughest kid on our side. Um, so I, it's, it's going to hurt like heck and they'll, they'll make it okay. I mean, they'll wrap it up, they'll put a pad on it. It's gonna hurt like heck on Sunday. So um, some guys handle those things different. Usually the first time they're okay, it's how they deal with the next day, whether or not he'll be good for the next game. Because in the first game, he's not gonna have any idea, it's gonna hurt. You get enough adrenaline going. But that Sunday on a, on a bone injury like that, it's miserable. And then you kind of really find out how, they're, how, how tough they are. Um, I don't question Kobe's toughness at all. So I, I don't. I don't think uh, now he'll have to get used to playing with the club. He'll have a little. Uh, he'll have the two fingers available, but the rest of it will be kind of wrapped up. So um, he'll start. He'll be back on Tuesday. Um, the biggest thing right now is to get the incision. There's about six or seven stitches in there that need to heal, uh, so that they don't get infected. Um, that would be the, the biggest concern. How right different now. is that from Chase's injury? Because he had the, the hand. The Chase's leg. more was the wrist. So his wrist. Um, he had a little bit more movement with his fingers. Kobe's fingers will be a little bit. So it is different. Uh, the brace will be similar so that their techniques are the same. Chase is able to actually use all five fingers. Kobe won't be able to. So that'll be the biggest difference in tackling and, and all that stuff. So he's going to have to be really physical and running through all those things, uh, especially out on the perimeter, uh, what Kobe plays. What exactly was Kobe's injury? Broke his hand. Oh. Broke his broke the finger, not his hand. Broke his finger, the middle finger right below it broke it. So the the bone going down broke. Upon rewatching Cal, how well did you think Jack Jones played in his first start here? Um, I thought he did. Uh, I thought he was pretty good. Um, I'm a I'm a tough critic, so I think there's a lot of things that we can improve on, and that's with everybody, not with him. Uh, so. Uh, he did a nice job though because he didn't find out he was starting until pregame warmups, and so um, you always talk. I mean, it, you, you always talk about next man up and preparing yourself like you're the starter. Until you're the starter, you ain't the starter. And I mean, we can talk all that stuff we want to, and we preach it, and I believe in that stuff because you have to prepare yourself mentally. But unless you are now, Jack has experience because. I mean, he played at SC and, and he's played in big time games. He played in the Rose Bowl. I mean, he, he's done something that we all want to aspire to do around here. So he had an advantage in that in that aspect of it. Willie had the advantage of he got all week to know he was going to start. And he still struggled the first, I mean, the, the fourth, uh, fifth play of the game, he gives up a 30 yard pass where I told Chase, man, I mean, you need to start freaking pointing at that dude so everybody doesn't think it's you because it wasn't him. But uh, it, it just just John with him and stuff, you know, hey, hey come on, man, that, that you got to be there so everybody knows whose fault it is. But no, nah, I'm just giving Willie a hard time. He, he, he and Willie really recovered from that deal. So that was that was pretty cool. I mean, he 
he had all week to prepare and, and did a nice job because that can really crush somebody sometimes when you give up a deep ball early. And he was able to fight back, and, and he played well the rest of the you game. You really shut Cal down after the first drive of the second half. Um, what was the contributing factors in the 12 run in a row drive? Um, what you guys were able to do after that? The the biggest thing was in the, in the whole game, uh, we had five assignment errors. On that one drive and 12 plays, we had four. So we came out of halftime. Um, I mean, relaxed. They, they came out. I'm, I'm, I don't know if we thought it was going to be easy. I mean, we, we haven't handled that stuff when we think we're going to do something that's going to be simple yet. And so, I mean, it wasn't. Cal wasn't going super fast. They weren't. They weren't running new plays. Um, so we were. I thought we were a little bit. Uh, we weren't as aggressive on that as, on that series. And we made some mistakes. And on two of them were third downs. The very last one, and then a third and six that we we have two guys on the wrong side on both those plays where leaves the lane open. Now we recovered and made them six yard gains, but those things should be stoned at the line of scrimmage. And I, on, the, on the touchdown, I got really upset because that's the defense that we've ran a hundred times since the beginning of fall camp. And we don't get lined up and we should have a guy pinching and hitting it in the backfield. And instead they scored a touchdown when we were, we were too high. Our nose, our uh, nose dart did a really nice job getting through the, the center and the guard to the play side. The backside's too high and gets run off the ball. And then we don't have a guy pinching. So, uh, we made assignment errors on that drive. We got after them on the sideline. They responded really well. And then we were a lot more aggressive. Uh, we were shooting gaps. We were, it was uh, a lot more downhill than it was on that drive. And we've got to do that for 60 minutes. We can't do it for all but one series. I mean, we give up the long play on the second series and we give up uh, a dirty eyes and chase on a double move route. And Chase, actually, I'm going to give Chase recovered from that too because he got beat on that and then he was really pretty solid the rest of the game in coverage and in run support. Um, and then I thought we did, it was a big time stop after the, the turnover. Uh, I mean, they ended up getting zero yards, were inches away from blocking the field goal. Merlin it actually went under his arm. He did a great job of coming. Um, or else we might scoop that thing and score. Uh, but I thought that was a big momentum swing because they had an opportunity to, to put some points on the board, and then our offense did a great job, drove it down, and put it in the end zone. And, uh, I mean, from that point on, it was nice to see our kids on the sideline. Uh, I mean, I, and I told them when they, when they got the ball with 2.53 to go, and we ain't being passive. I mean, you guys are, you make plays. The only way they beat us is if they get over the top. And we're not going to give them an opportunity to throw it. So when you get back there, make them feel it. And they responded. They did a nice job. It was good. Shari had, obviously, the interception. And I mean the knockdown. But just, I mean, I know you said the secondary and the communication has gotten better all year long. But I mean, just his development and how he's grown from in the, in the defense from last year to this year. Um, he's gotten better the last two weeks. I was, I was disappointed a little bit in his performances early. Um, he made a couple of mistakes assignment-wise. Um, and he played, he played okay early. He probably played pretty good to okay. He put a really big emphasis on trying to get better in practice. And when you practice good, you play good. I mean, George Lee's a perfect example. He busted his tail last week in practice, and he's the defensive lineman of the week in the Pac-12. I mean, those things. You're welcome, George. Those things are. Uh, those things are. Those are, those are. That's where you get better. I, and I say it to these guys all the time. You don't win the game. You win the game on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday's preparation to make Saturday easier and to have a chance. And the last couple of weeks, I thought Shari did a really nice job and he's played better for it. And those are the, and we expect those things out of Shari all year long. I mean, I'm, we, we missed, I think I went back through this whole uh, last two weeks. Uh, we have two interceptions, which is really depressing. We have, we've had eight legitimate chances at interceptions that we haven't converted. And I mean, we got to make those plays. I expect them to make those plays. When you so. start to think about preparing for Washington State, what all kind of goes into the calculus of that? Um, I think I think Coach Leach is is uh, he's super innovative. I mean, he does, and he's got his mind uh, set on what they want to do. Um, and I mean, it's been a, a media stir. He, he called his team out, so they're going to come in here um, fired up with their hair on fire, ready to go. And he's a really good football coach that will have those guys. Um, he says things that he believes in them, and, and he's, he's got a way of getting his message across to his team. Because I, I promise you, every single one of those guys, I mean, I don't, I don't take it that they're going to fold on him because that's not, that's not the culture that they've built up there. And it ain't the first time that he's told them how he feels about them. So none of them boys got their feelings hurt. They're going to come in here ready to freaking whoop our tail. 
And so our boys better not feel good about themselves and know what challenge we have. And they've done, uh, I mean, they've, they scored a lot of points up until the Utah game. They've been, I mean, Houston did a nice job. They held them to 31. They had a couple of unforced errors in that game, but they've been 50 to 60 in every other game until Utah got after a month on last Saturday night. And uh, he'll have his boys ready to prepare. And plus they have the extra week like us to get ready. So they'll be healthy and they're going to hear how, how soft they've been for the last while. So they'll come in ready to go. They score a lot of points. So obviously that's a challenge. It's a big challenge, big challenge. Um, I mean, I, you got to hold them to one less. And I think the quarterback is really, really good, especially he's patient. He sits in the pocket. I mean, you three man, three man rush him, and he's gonna, he don't even bounce around. He will stand there until he finds somebody coming open. And we've got to do a really good job um, when the quarterback, if it's not immediate pressure, if he's moving around back there, of, of staying in coverage and then have guys over the top, and we've got to be able to play the ball. And I thought that's what Utah did a great job. They did a great job of playing the ball. They mixed up the look. They got some pressure on him. Um, we're going to have to get some, some pressure out of our looks and get the ball out of the quarterback's hand quick. And I think we have some good DBs, so um, if they're up for the challenge. It'll be a, it'll be a fun day. It's going, to be a great, it's going to be a great challenge. I mean, I really look forward to it. I mean, this is, uh, this is one that you kind of put on your calendar and, and hope you get after them pretty good. Pass rush looked a lot better last week. Uh, it did. We we did. We had we had. Uh, they came a little bit harder. Um, a couple wrinkles, and like I said, we we had some deficiencies that we were able to exploit that got after. Um, tell you what, though, that is a cow is a physical physical football team. They are uh, that there was some really this bye week came at a good time because the last from Michigan State, Colorado, California, those have been three very physical football games and. Um, I think our, I like the way our guys are playing in the physicality portion of it. So this bye week was good to get those guys healed up. I mean, I say it all the time, if you don't hurt, you ain't a good football player. And we got some guys that were dinged up. But the good thing is they, they practiced this week. There, there was a lot of good energy at practice with, with this week, which is good. They'll get a couple days off now. Um, and then we'll start back on Sunday and we'll get after them. And Sunday, there will be a lot of energy, especially from the coaches on Sunday. I promise you that because they'll get lazy after being off for two days. But we'll. We'll have some fun. You were kind of teasing Dylan Sterling Cole during pump block drills yesterday. Mm -hmm. have you, I mean, aside from Ethan, have you ever been around a scholarship quarterback that's actually done special teams? Um, we had one in New Mexico that did some of those things. Uh, his name was Justin Malay. He was a, a safety. Ended up playing uh, in 2002. Go back and, and Google it. It's a great story. Uh, uh, we played at UNLV. Our quarterback breaks his arm the previous week against Texas Tech. Uh, the backup quarterback on a bye week goes home and gets in trouble. And so we had to put a walk on safety at quarterback and we installed the wing tee. I mean, the single wing of Highland Park football film, the most unbelievable thing you see. And the young man rushed for 167 yards and, and was the Mountain West player of the week. Uh, un unbelievable. Um, but he did those kind of things and he was on every special team. So ours, and, and that game, he stayed on the special teams. So it was our starting quarterback for that game and he was still on special teams. Um, he's the only one I've been around like that. Now I was giving uh, Dylan a hard time because he's over there punt block and punt blocking punts and he kind of pulls his hands out of the way and, and uh, it's like, man, I'm a quarterback. I'm like, you are, you are an athlete. You are not just a quarterback. Pride yourself on that. Don't ever just say I'm just something. And he kind of laughed and today he was doing it again today out there and, and did a really nice job. So uh, I thought uh, he did, he's done a really nice job. One, not being selfish. He's really helped our team. He's helped us significantly on defense this year, get ready. Um, we've had him over there on the scout time a couple of times. I've asked Coach Likens if, if we can steal him for some periods because he does some things. Not only at quarterback, we've had him play some wide receiver over there because he's so big and athletic. And the young man has not one time blinked, has not one time said no. Uh, he's put in extra work so that he can get his quarterback reps over there with those guys. And the offense has been gener generous enough to share him. So I'm super proud of, of Dylan. I mean, he, he's really helped this football team be four and one at this point right now because of uh, his sacrifices in the big picture. It's been really good. Awesome. Thank you guys. Uh -huh.